Hi, my name is Stefan Gez. I'm the CTO of Dalet and a member of the FIMS workgroup on the specifications of the repository service. The purpose of this presentation is to describe the minimum implementation requirements to set up a FIMS repository service. What we will describe in this presentation is what is required from a vendor to implement a repository service interface so that a FIMS compliant client application can access the repository. In particular, what operations needs to be available. By doing so, we'll address some of the basic concepts of themes from the perspective of a service implementer. Identifiers, differences between content and essence operations, etc. It is recommended that you watch the introductory presentations of this series on implementation guidelines before you watch this one. For any of the themes services, they are both user or client considerations and implementer considerations. This presentation focuses on implementer considerations only. Other sections of the implementation guidelines focus on how to use the basic operations described here. To address implementer considerations, we will review what are the mandatory op operations and the basic requirements concerning identifiers and create, read, update, delete operations for content and for essence. What are the objectives of the repository interface? The FIMS repository service provides a standardized interface to a repository of assets. While the first FIMS services, like capture, transfer, and transform, are focused on jobs, the repository service focuses on assets. What are assets in FIMS? Assets are media objects with a common structure shared by all services. FIMS defines a set of interface and to do so has to specify a common data model used by all services to ensure the interoperability of these services, which is the fundamental goal of FIMS. It is important to remember that FIMS specifies interfaces and a data model. In the FIMS data model, an asset is defined by identifiers, one or more, the content, the metadata that describes the asset, and the essence, the actual media files. An asset is represented by the BM content object. It contains identifiers and editorial information. It points to multiple instances of the BM content format object to represent the fact that the essence of an asset may exist in different formats, like a high resolution and a proxy version, for instance. The BM content format object contains information about a specific format, bitrate, resolution, and each format may point to multiple instances of the actual media files to represent the fact that multiple copies of the media may exist on different storage systems. The BM Essence Locator object describes the set of physical files, meaning the name and precise location in the file system. To implement a repository interface, is to expose your repository object through this data model. A repository interface minimum implementation must address the implementation of the core functions to generate identifiers, to manipulate repository objects, create, read, update, delete operations on content, and to manipulate physical media, create, read, update, delete operations on essence. Any client of the service must be able to rely on these functions. The repository service includes many operations and mechanisms, and they are not all mandatory. A compliant implementation may choose to ignore certain capabilities, especially if they make no sense for the repository to expose. So the theme service provides an API that advertises the supported capabilities of a specific implementation. This is the RCR, Repository Capabilities Registry. It's meta information about the repository service. There is a presentation that describes the RCR implementation. We focus here on the mandatory operations that must be present in any implementation. For illustration, we will use the sample implementation written by Loïc Barbou. 
it provides a minimal implementation of a repository service. To implement a repository interface is to expose a collection of assets through a standardized representation and a set of common functions to manipulate these assets. What are examples of repositories? Nearline Media Archives. You may have different archiving systems. This is a very good example of a repository type to be exposed through a standardized interface. A video server, as it stores a set of video files, can be exposed as a repository service interface. A media asset management system, of course, can expose its catalog of assets through a repository interface. In each case, these asset stores are exposed through the data model and the operations documented in the repository interface, regardless of the actual structure of the assets in the target repository, so that an external application can talk to any repository in a uniform manner. This is what FIMS is all about. Let's address some of the repository core concepts and the definitions. As we have said before, the data model part of FIMS is essential to the specifications. Repository objects have identifiers, and any implementation of the service must provide a mechanism to generate IDs. The content symbolizes the asset metadata. Adding content to a repository is very similar to inserting an object inside a database. The operation is fast and simple. Essence is represented by one or more physical files, audio or video. Adding an essence requires a placeholder content object to be created first and is materialized by processing physical files, moving or copying files. Operations affecting essence files are usually long-running transactions and they require asynchronous message communication. This is a distinctive aspect of themes to take into account what is specific to media. Let's pursue our exploration of the core object. Each of the concepts we just mentioned are supported by a data model entity and a set of operations. For identifier, the representation is an ID string, the operation, the generate unique ID operation. For content, the representation is the BMO, the BM object, and the BM content object. The operations are all the content operations. For the essence, the representation are the BM content format and the BM essence locator objects, and the operations are all the essence operations. You can look at the Themes API documentation for a detailed description of the structure and attributes of all of the objects. We talked about the data model objects, so let's now talk about the service operations. For the repository interface, here is the list of operations to consider. We have classified them into several categories. The content operations, add content, get content, purge content, the essence operations, add essence, remove essence, retrieve essence, purge essence, and the other operations, in particular the generate unique ID operation and all the locking operations. Note that support locking is not mandatory. It is actually a good example of operations that do not make sense in all repository implementation. As part of the Themes 1.1 package for the repository service, there is a sample implementation provided by Triscale and Loic Bamboo. This is a good starting point as it provides a very simple and lean implementation of a repository interface. The target repository itself is just a collection of BM content objects kept in memory, so the implementation does not rely on any specific system. So we are now going to review the most important operations. Let's review Generate Unique ID, which is a mandatory operation. It refers to the resource ID type, which defines the ID object. Of course, this is a synchronous call. Any repository service must implement a function 
to generate identifiers as GUID. IDs in themes are normalized strings based on SEMT 2029. Unicity should be guaranteed within a given repository. No unicity is required across multiple repositories. An implementer needs to review some basic questions. If you generate theme-specific IDs, they need to be mapped to the internal IDs of the target repository. The repository interface is generally not the only method to create assets, but it will typically expose all the assets regardless of how they were added to the repository. You may also choose to filter out some assets and only expose part of the repository through themes. This may be necessary if the repository contains assets of a type that is irrelevant to themes, for instance, non-media assets. Let's now review the content operations. Add content, get content, replace content, update content properties, remove and unremove content. Content is a description of the asset, the metadata. The representation of the content is encapsulated in the BM content type. BM content objects are placeholders. They may or may not point to actual media. All content operations are synchronous. They are expected to execute quickly and provide immediate results, success or failure. We will review in more details the add content and get content operations from an implementation perspective. These two functions are expected to be heavily used by any client operation. The add content operation creates a new BM content object in the repository. This object is actually a placeholder. At this stage, there is no media file yet. The BM content object has an identifier that the calling application must provide. Typically, the calling application would get the identifier through a call to generate unique ID. The ID provided to create the BM content object will be used to retrieve the object later. So the implementation must maintain themes IDs, guarantee their uniqueness, and map them to internal IDs in the target repository. Metadata provided by the calling application in the BM content object must be parsed and stored. It is expected that the metadata provided will be maintained by the repository. As most operations, add content can pass credentials. The handling of credentials, or the lack of credentials, is implementation specific. It is not mandatory to maintain actual credentials. Let's look at the sample implementation of add content. The add content function makes a call to add BM content. This function takes a BM content object, first verifies that it is not empty. It then uses the resource ID field of the BM content object to make sure the content we try to add does not already exist. Otherwise, it sends an error. Then, it simply adds the object to the repository. In the sample implementation, the repository is a simple list of BM content objects kept in memory. Finally, we set the status of the BM content object to online, and the operation returns the BM content object. The get content operation retrieves a BM content object stored in the repository through its identifier. The operation takes a BM content object as parameter with the identifier filled in. The implementation must decide on the metadata set it wants to expose through the themes interface. For a given implementation, the underlying repository system may maintain properties or metadata that are not relevant to themes. In a first step, it may be enough to expose the asset metadata in the EBU core format that is a standard extension of the themes model. The filter parameter in the get content operation is designed to allow the user to specify if the return BM content object should include all of the available information or part of it, for instance, metadata only and no essence information. By default, the filter value is full and all available information that the implementer has chosen to expose should be returned. 
What does the add content operation do in different repository examples? In the case of a nearline archive system, it will add an entry in the archive catalog. In the case of video server, it will create a placeholder for the video file. Attaching the actual media files would be part of a subsequent essence operation. For a media asset management system, it would add an entry in the MAM catalog. In all these cases, implementing the get content operation is to answer request on a specific asset and expose its metadata in the themes format. Let's briefly review the other content operations. Replace content, completely replace an existing BM content object with a new one with the same ID. Update content properties. It, replace, it replaces a list of specified properties with new values. The properties that can be updated must be referenced and listed in the upgradable properties in the RCR. Remove content puts the BM content object in a list of removed objects, sort of trash bin, so that it can be restored through the unremove content operation. Note that it is not mandatory for an implementation to support remove and unremove mechanisms, but the functions must be implemented. Purge content operation completely removes the object from the repository. For more details on what each of these functions are doing, please refer to the Themes Repository Interface documentation. We are now going to talk about the essence operations in the repository service. To understand the essence operations, we need to have a deeper look at the data model. Once the data model is well understood, the actual operations are fairly simple. Essence is represented by one or more physical files, audio or video files. Adding an essence requires a placeholder, the content object, to be created first. And then copying or moving physical files. Operations affecting essence files are usually long-running transactions. So they are asynchronous operations in nature and they require asynchronous message communication. As far as the objects involved in the essence operations, remember that the BM content object can contain multiple essence formats, the BM format object, each with its own technical metadata. BM content format represents an instance of content in a particular container or format, and BM's BM essence locator describes where and how essence files are actually stored. Let's explore fur further the uh, data model structure for essence files. The object BM essence locator describes essence files and it is expressed in different object subtypes. The simple file locator is a path to a single file, for instance an MXF or P1A file. The list file locator object uh, would be a list of file paths, for instance, a collection of audio and video tracks. And the folder locator object would be um, a path to a folder that contains um, any media file structure. A good example of that would be an MXF ISO2 bundle. The add essence operation is an asynchronous request to add new essence to an existing content. It adds essence files of a given format to a repository and it associates these files with an existing content element, object of type BM content type. The files must be in an accessible location, actually a source location advertised in the RCR, the Repository Capabilities Registry. The essence files must have been copied there before the call to add essence. The add essence request provides a BM content object, a source location for the media files, and a format. Optionally, it can provide an essence placeholder 
that has been previously created, typically through a call to the add essence placeholder operation. If the implementation moves the files to repository storage, then the returned essence locator must reflect the new locations while preserving the resource ID. And the files must be removed from the source location. An alternate option is that the source location is already a repository storage location and there is no need to move or delete media files any longer. So again, the add essence operation is an asynchronous request to add new essence to an existing content. When the operation completes successfully, or if it fails, a notification of the result must be sent. So this is an asynchronous operation. Failure of the request may result in an immediate fault message return. An acknowledged request submission may still fail later in the operation, in which case the failure will be delivered in a fault notification sent to the fault to endpoint. So when implementing a repository service, you need to implement asynchronous communication mechanism. Essence operations work on media, and so they take time to execute. As a result, they, requ they require asynchronous communication mechanism. Most essence operations have a notify at parameter to specify an endpoint where failure or success notifications are sent to once the operation completes. So themes defines notification objects for operation such as add essence operation notification to report success or add essence operation fault notification to report failure. These objects contain the content, essence location, operation ID, and in the case of failure, the repository fault object that describes the error. All these notifications and the error uh, codes are uh, provided in the themes documentation. So the retrieve essence operation is an asynchronous request to retrieve the physical bytes uh, representation of an essence to a given known location. So the operation takes an essence locator object that represents a particular essence with all the information about where and you know the structure and, and, and where the files are, a location where the essence is to be retrieved to, copied to, and a notification at object where to send success or failure notifications. The location parameter is of type known location. The list of valid known location destinations must be registered in the RCR. More generally, source and destination location have to be registered in the RCR, and I will talk about it later at the end of the presentation. If we review the actual steps of the retrieve essence operation that needs to be implemented, First, make sure that uh, an essence locator source is provided in the, uh, in the call, that a known location is provided, generate an operation ID to be re returned by the retrieve request synchronously while the operation executes. Of course, check that the essence locator information is complete and that the location, the destination location, is a valid destination. Valid destination means that it is part of the destinations registered in the RCR. The actual operation uh, is to then copy the essence to the destination location. The operation may differ depending if the essence locator is a simple file, a list of files, or a folder. At the end, report a notification success if the operation completes, or failure if an error occurs, occurred during the process. So what are the add and retrieve essence operations expected to do in various implementation cases? So in the case of a nearline archive system, the add essence operation will just copy the media file from the location provided in the add parameters into the archive repository and notify when the operation completes. 
the retrieve essence operation will just will re request will trigger the retrieve operation within the archive system and copy the media files to the specified destination location. If we take the case of a, a video server repository service implementation, the add essence operation will copy the video file to the server. Uh, and an operation like the delete and purge operation will actually remove the video from the server. So let's have a brief look at the other essence operations. So we have the add essence placeholder operation that we mentioned briefly before. So this is a synchronous request to add a new essence placeholder to an existing content. So there is no essence movement in that operation so that later an add essence operation with the optional essence placeholder parameter can actually add the media essence to the VM content object. The remove essence is also a synchronous request for the repository service to mark essences for purging. The actual deletion will happen as a result of a purge essence operation unless of course the uh, application the client application has called the unremove essence operation first note that the request takes a list of essences but they must be part of the same content the purge essence is in this case an asynchronous request to completely delete the essence files from the repository storage only removed essence can be purged so remove essence must be called first purge essence takes a single essence locator object to purge i would like to talk briefly about the rcr the repository capability registry and what is needed at minimum to implement uh, in a repository service um, so we look at the get general capability, uh, the general capability type object, and also the object uh, known location that we have mentioned already before. So the RCR is the repository capabilities registry. The RCR advertises the repository service capabilities. It lists supported operations and essential parameters. So you can find a lot of information on the RCR in the FIMS repository service documentation. You should look for the object type general capability type, which contains all the parameters that are part of the RCR. Optional capabilities flags, for instance, support locking, supports cancel add essence, supports content versioning. Numeric parameters such as uh, max query result or query timeout. The sample implementation provides a complete example of RCR. But let's focus on the minimal uh, RCR implementation. Source and destination locations for media have to be registered in the RCR through the supported source locations and supported destination locations parameters of the general capability object. These parameters contain a list of known location objects they are needed to implement the add essence and retrieve essence operations that require uh, to define to use the to use object of type known location. This concludes our presentation. As we have mentioned before, there is a lot of information that can be uh, found in the uh, themes documentation, and um, of course. Um, you know something very useful for uh, someone who wants to implement uh, make an implementation of the repository service uh, is to look at the sample implementation uh, that we have mentioned uh, in this presentation thank you